about. Uh, hot flushes, aching joints, weight gain and brain fog are all symptoms of the menopause. But did you know uh, it can also affect men too? So the andropause, also known as the male menopause, is caused by low testosterone and it affects millions of men, although many don't realise this. So someone who does know the reality of this is Ross Tompkins. He lived with debilitating symptoms for almost a year before being diagnosed. And as you saw, he joins us alongside uh, Dr. Hussein. Uh, Ross, I, can you tell us a bit about what happened to you then, like when you started to notice that something wasn't right and, and what it was? Yeah, sure. So it started with joint pain. That was the overriding symptom that I had to start with. So I ignored it for quite a long time, as many men tend to ignore symptoms. Um, that became uh, lethargy and low energy. Uh, and it was really when I started to develop brain fog that I thought I needed to do something about it. And that's what took me to the doctors initially. Yeah. And did you, had you ever heard of the andropause? No. 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 So when you, went to the, it. when you went to the doctors, what, what, did you have any idea of what might be wrong with you? Um, well, I'm a physiotherapist by background, so I knew it wasn't certain things. I knew my joint pain wasn't a ligament, it wasn't a muscle, it wasn't a, a tendon that was causing the problem. So that kind of helped me, I guess, diagnose or roughly know what was going on. Yeah. And how bad did it get for you? Um, the, the, I guess the defining moment, if you like, the thing that really made me push forward to find the diagnosis was I was driving home from work one day and I gave myself a little mental test because my brain was so foggy. And it was literally to try and name as many things in the car that I could. And I couldn't even tell you what the steering wheel was called. Mm -hmm. mm. Didn't and, it, yeah. was, it, was, it was awful. And, that, and actually, I got home from work that day and um, I said to my wife, like, I can't carry on like this. I know something's wrong and we've just got to get to the bottom of it. I've, I've had a, I mean, obviously, I've had a similar experience to that. My pituitary gland, basically, it's non-functional. Um, so I have to take replacement steroids to basically sustain life, some hydrocortisone, yep. genotropin, growth hormone, yep. and of course, testosterone. Um, but I know the effects of, of low testero testosterone because I've had to kind of fiddle about over the years with kind of getting my testosterone levels right. I, firstly, I use like this intramuscular thing, it's like a three inch needle, yep. and it's a long acting testosterone. And I found with that, I got really big peaks and troughs. So some days I felt like I could climb Kilimanjaro and then the next day I'd be feeling really low and flat. But the brain fog, is, I think is one of the biggest indicators to low testosterone. Certainly was for me, that sense of even just making a coercive sentence would often happen to me. And the fog was, when it came, was just awful. And this was to do with your brain tumour then? Yeah, that's... yeah, the, the tumour basically affected the pituitary. And I think a lot of the damage was done to the tumour when I had the operation. You know, it's in quite a volatile position. Um, the, the pituitary gland, which is a P-shaped gland, it's the body's master gland, which is positioned at the base of the brain. Um, it's basically responsible for sustaining good, healthy life. And mine has pretty much been demolished. So um, it's... It, it's, it's very tough. I mean, the, the testosterone thing, for me, affects... I mean, hydrocortisone, obviously, is a life-sustaining um, hormone, but mm -hmm. testosterone is the one that I think, more than anything, affects your yeah. personal well-being. Yeah, yeah, Doctor, can you just explain a bit more about this, then? Yes, so what we've just touched on there is how you can have so many different ways that testosterone can drop. So when we talk about the andropause, or some people term the male menopause, this is where we've got a decline in the testosterone level. Now, the level at which it causes symptoms from patient to patient actually varies. Um, and that does lead to a lot of confusion when it comes to the treatment. However, in the past few years, there has been improvements from the British Society of Sexual Medicine to give better and clearer guidelines that we can help manage that. Because there are a number of key symptoms and the symptoms range from mild, moderate to severe. And if we start off with mild symptoms, these often will mimic sort of the normal process of aging. So it can be very hard to pick out. We've got tiredness, we've got symptoms around reduction in your sexual drive. And if we think about when most people will present, often men, they're going to look for other symptoms. And in particular, if we go to the moderate symptoms, we've got that brain fog and we've got that difficulty with your mood, maybe feeling more anxious as well, because Often it's when the severe symptoms that start to present that people take notice. 
Yeah. And so, Ross, in your case, did you have any idea or did you find out why your testosterone had dropped? Um, no, we actually never got to the bottom of it. Um, it was just sort of one of those things, I guess, we've just moved on from there. Yeah. Successfully been treated now for sort of nine years and feel healthier, happier and better now. What do you use? Do you use a gel or a um, gel? I used a cream for about cream. five years. Okay. Uh, and then I started to still experience those peaks and troughs that you, yeah, that yeah. you described. Yeah. Um, so I moved to an injection and I use actually a okay. subcutaneous injection uh, every few days so you don't get the peaks and troughs. You don't have a big needle so you don't get scar tissue or problems. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd never heard of this before. Mm. Uh, is this more common then than perhaps yeah, people might realise? It's a combination of things. So testosterone naturally, it will build up through your 20s, peak when you're 30 and then slowly decline by about 1% to 2% every year. So, yes, as we naturally get older, our testosterone levels will drop, but there are a number of things that can drive it to come down faster. Um, taking certain substances like alcohol, cannabis, a poor diet or having extra weight. Conditions like type 2 diabetes as well will drive down your testosterone levels. So there are a number of lifestyle factors which can lead to this. And it's a bit, we were talking to me and Russ earlier, it's a bit of a circle because... Low testosterone reduces your motivation, reduces your ability yeah. to live healthily and live well, and then that drives your testosterone lower. So for many men, it's important that they get onto testosterone as a way for them to start that journey to make the important lifestyle changes. Made, made me mm. feel massively antisocial. Mm. Yeah, really did. How yeah. did it affect you predominantly? What were the My... sort of, you know, personality-wise, did it affect you or was it just more like the joint aches and so on? No, definitely personality as well. Yeah. So, uh, and my wife would always pick up with it before me. Yeah. So years ago, she actually would think she'd done something wrong because yeah. I'd go quite distant. I'd be quite vague. My communication changed. Um, and she'd think, are you okay? And stock male answer was, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, and so she'd consequently go away thinking she'd done something wrong. And actually, years later, we realised she was just way better at picking it up than I yeah. was. Mm -hmm. um, did she pick up the changes this. with when you were taking the medication as well? Did she notice? She definitely did. Yeah, yeah. 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 So ev everything got better. Mine did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Especially when it was high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Awful. It's a, is, there, is there a test then you can get for this? Like, can you find out whether you've got low testosterone? Yes. And before I go into specifically the test, what I would say is it's important that when people are seeking support in this, not to go specifically just for the blood test, because the blood test just on its own is not that useful unless you've done a full assessment, you've done the history, potentially examined the patient, because it's when you look at it in the big picture that you can make the important decisions. But yeah, you can test for testosterone. Now, the most of the testosterone in our blood is actually bound to protein. So initially they'll look at your testosterone levels. If it's in a borderline area, they may do further tests to explore what the free testosterone, the one that isn't stuck to the protein, as well as some of your other hormones. Because as Russ um, mentioned, like your testosterone is controlled by other hormones released from your pituitary in this sort of feedback loop. So it's important to get a better picture rather than just purely looking at the testosterone. Yeah, so it's very similar then in terms of the symptoms you're describing to the menopause for women, isn't it? Yeah, no, absolutely yeah. very similar. Yeah, it's, and it's pretty much the same with the difference that men will also or can also experience erectile dysfunction. The, mm. the lows and the highs as well are just as bad as each other because when it's low, like you mentioned, erectile dysfunction, all kinds of other problems, the brain fog, but when it's high angry all the time yeah. you feel quite volatile about everything i find myself you know just randomly crying for no reason yeah it, and that's the important to note because getting the treatment in the right level is important i just levels, want to be normalized yeah yeah because yeah, high levels are dangerous not just for the sort of short-term symptoms as yeah. you mentioned but yeah for the heart and for risk of prostate cancer although our understanding and research in this is limited and we need better trials with more people and for longer periods so that's why it's, it's an evolving area. We're getting a better understanding and hopefully that will translate in better care. Yeah, and, and thank you, Russ, for coming in to talk about it, Russ, because, you know, that makes a big difference as well. Like hearing you lads just chatting about it has already taught me loads that I didn't know that I clearly should know as well. So yeah. thank you for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Russ and Ross, that would be a good duet, you <laughs> yeah. two, wouldn't Ross it? And Ross. Russ and Ross. I'm Ross, he's Ross. Together yeah. we're 